and welcome to Canal Winchester, Ohio, our starting point for Steaming in 93. We're here to join the Hocking Valley 33 as she heads a seven-car consist south towards Nelsonville over the route of the original Hocking Valley Railroad, which was constructed in 1870. The motive power on the Hocking Valley roster includes a C&O GP7 and the Hocking Valley 33. Number 33 was built by Baldwin in 1916 and is typical of the G5 class 280 consolidation type locomotives operated by the Hocking Valley until 1930. Number 33 was acquired from the Lake Superior and Ishpeming Railroad in 1967. And it's ironic that the Lake Superior and Ishpeming had acquired locomotives from the Hocking Valley during the 1920s. In 1972, number 33 returned to the rails after extensive restoration. And over the last 21 years, she has powered excursions to various destinations along the Hocking Valley, including Carbon Hill, New Straitsville, and Logan. So now, let's catch up with number 33 as she goes steaming in 93 from Canal Winchester to Nelsonville.
As we mentioned earlier, our train has been following the original route of the Hocking Valley, which ran 195 miles between Athens and Toledo. By the 1920s, the Hocking Valley operated over 300 miles of track with 138 steam locomotives, passenger equipment, and nearly 15,000 freight cars, which serviced more than 100 coal mines in the area. In 1930, the Hocking Valley was absorbed by the Chesapeake and Ohio Railroad. Operations continued along the CNO's Columbus Pomeroy branch until 1971. Today, the line is operated by the Indiana and Ohio from Columbus to Logan, where the line interchanges with the Hocking Valley, which operates from Logan to Nelsonville by way of Haydenville and Diamond. As number 33 steams the last mile or so into Nelsonville, let's head for Bryson City, North Carolina for a short ride on the Great Smoky Mountains Railway. The Great Smoky Mountains operates over the former Southern Murphy Branch between Murphy and Dillsboro, but for the most part, excursions are confined to trips from Dillsboro to Bryson City and return. Our head end power for today's trip is number 1702, another 280 consolidation type locomotive. Number 1702 was built by Baldwin in 1942 for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and saw subsequent service on the Reeder and other railroads before being acquired by the Great Smoky Mountains in 1991. The sluggish economy was nearly fatal for the 1702 in 1992. Expenses were up and ridership was less than expected. By the time the 1992 season came to a close, Rumors circulated that number 1702 was for sale after only one season on the Great Smoky Mountains. But after a movie deal to film portions of The Fugitive on the GSM and a slight easing in the economy, number 1702 received a reprieve in 1993, along with an operating schedule mostly limited to holiday weekends. So now, let's go steaming in 93 with the Great Smoky Mountains 1702 as she heads east along the Tuckasegee River, headed for Dillsboro.
As the 1702 arrives at the Dillsboro Station, let's head for New Haven, Kentucky, home of the Kentucky Railway Museum. The KRM operates over the former Louisville and Nashville Lebanon branch between New Haven and Boston, with the only surviving operational Louisville and Nashville steam locomotive in existence, number 152. Built by the Rogers Locomotive Works in 1905 for the LNN, number 152 was among the first K1 class 462 Light Pacifics acquired by the LNN for use in mainline passenger service. The K1s, numbers 150 to 154, were so well received by the LNN that the railroad built 20 additional K1 class Pacifics in the LNN's South Louisville shops between 1906 and 1907. Number 152 saw 48 years of service on the LNN before being retired in 1953. In 1958, LNN President John Tilford donated the 152 to the Kentucky Railway Museum. Restoration was begun in 1972 by the KRM volunteer members. The restoration continued for the next 13 years on weekends and evenings as funds allowed. Thousands of hours of hard work turned into reality in 1985 when number 152 steamed into service again. Now let's climb aboard and enjoy the ride with the LNN 152 as she goes steaming in 93 from New Haven to Boston on the Kentucky Railway Museum.
After a 10-mile run from New Haven, the 152 climbs a slight grade into Boston for a brief layover before returning to New Haven. And from Boston, we'll head north to Akron, Ohio for a first-hand look at what will surely receive the 1993 Model Railroader Kit Bashing Award. And the honors go to the Fort Wayne Railroad Historical Society for converting a Lima-built 284 Berkshire into an Alco-built 284 CNO Kanawa, number 2765. Although the Nickel Plate 765 has operated excursions via CSX from Huntington to Hinton over the last 10 years, she is the exception rather than the rule. Since the merger between the Seaboard and Chessie systems in the mid-1980s, the Chessie system was known for their steam excursions with 614 up Sandpatch, but the Seaboard system did not have, nor did they welcome, steam on their tracks. This no-steam policy continued after the CSX merger, with few exceptions. After several years of successful 765 excursions, the no-steam policy began to thaw, but the thaw progressed towards a melt, thanks not to the 765, but to the Atlanta chapter NRHS and the New Georgia Railroad, with several successful excursions with the Atlanta and West Point 290 over CSX trackage. The New Georgia excursions, along with the 765 Huntington to Hinton excursions, helped break the CSX ice jam. By January 1993, the rumors circulated that CSX would operate a scheduled steam program in 1993 using the modified Chesapeake and Ohio 2765. In the politically correct 1990s, it would not be proper for CSX to operate a nickel plate locomotive with its Norfolk and Western heritage. The only politically correct solution was a locomotive that appeared to have the proper CSX Chessie heritage, which brings us to the Kit Bashing Award and the CNO 2765, as she provides the head end power for a CSX steam excursion from Akron to Pittsburgh. From Akron, our train has followed the former B&O line as far as Newcastle, Pennsylvania, where the 2765 interchanged to the former Pittsburgh and Lake Erie Railroad. From here, the 2765 will head south and east along the P&LE through West Pittsburgh, Beaver Falls, Monaca, and Aliquippa before arriving in Pittsburgh.
after a four-hour layover in Pittsburgh, the 2765 began her return trip to Akron. As the 2765 heads for Akron along the former B&O right-of-way, we'll travel east to Temple, Pennsylvania for a visit on the Blue Mountain and Redding with the BM&R 425. Operations on the BM&R require that the 425 run in reverse from the South Hamburg station to the station at Temple because there is no Y or other turning facility along this stretch of the former Pennsylvania Railroad right-of-way. At Temple, Number 425 eases to the south end of the Temple Main Line before switching to the passing track in preparation for the return trip to Hamburg. Number 425 was built by Baldwin for the Gulf Mobile and Northern in 1928. In 1940, the GM and N was absorbed by the Gulf Mobile and Ohio, and the 425 was renumbered 580. The 462 Pacific was acquired by the Blue Mountain and Redding in 1974 and numbered back to 425 and has seen service on this Pennsylvania short line since. So let's watch as the 425 completes her runaround moves and prepares to head her short consist back to Hamburg.
After a flawless 13-mile run from Temple, number 425 arrives at the South Hamburg station. And from here, we'll say so long to the Blue Mountain and Redding as we head south about 40 miles for a visit on America's oldest short line, the Strasburg Railroad. The Strasburg operates nine-mile round-trip excursions through the Pennsylvania Dutch Amish farm country of Lancaster County from Strasburg to Paradise. The road to Paradise was chartered in 1832 and has seen continuous operation since the first wooden rail was laid in 1835. Horse-drawn carriages made up the first trains from Strasburg to the junction with the Philadelphia and Columbia Railroad, known as Lehman Place. Iron rail was laid beginning in 1851 to accommodate the railroad's first steam locomotives. But steam was phased out on the Strasburg by 1926 in favor of internal combustion motive power. Although the railroad changed hands several times since 1861, regular operations continued on the Strasburg until 1958. By then, passenger service was in decline and the Strasburg was in financial trouble. Rescue came from Lancaster industrialist Henry Long and other rail fans who purchased the line in 1958. The first excursions were operated with a vintage 1926 internal combustion locomotive and a Reading coach. In 1960, the first steam locomotive was purchased for the Strasbourg collection, and the rest is history, with a ridership in 1993 expected to exceed 425,000. The Strasbourg operates on a year-round schedule, but the summer months offer an opportunity to see two different train sets in action. Alternate trains depart every 30 minutes, so let's catch up with the first train of the day, headed up by the Strasbourg 90. Number 90 is a 210 decapod type locomotive built by the Baldwin Locomotive Works in 1924 for the Great Western Railway at Loveland, Colorado. Strasburg acquired number 90 from the Great Western in 1967, and the locomotive has seen service on the road to paradise ever since. So, with our train safely out of the station, let's go steaming in 93 with the Strasburg 90 as she steams into paradise. As trains head east out of Strasbourg, they travel through rich Amish farmland, past Cherry Hill and the siding at Groff's Grove, before stopping at Black Horse Road for a few long blasts on the whistle.
after continuing to Lehman Place. The locomotive does a runaround and begins her return trip towards Strasbourg by steaming west as far as the Groff's Grove siding. While number 90 waits her turn on the siding, let's head back to Strasbourg for the second train of the day, powered by the Strasbourg 89. Number 89 was built in 1910 for the Grand Trunk Railway of Canada. This 260 Mogul type locomotive was built by the Canadian Locomotive Works as number 1009. In 1923, title of the locomotive was transferred to the Canadian National Railway and renumbered 911. The locomotive was numbered 89 in 1951. By 1965, number 89 had been acquired by the Green Mountain Railroad Corporation, owned by F. Nelson Blunt, and is the only known steam locomotive from the Blunt estate not donated to Steamtown. Number 89 was purchased in kit form in 1972 and stored in a dismantled state until the late 1980s. In 1988, the class E10A Mogul was completely rebuilt at the Strasbourg shops and is one of the main attractions at Strasbourg today. So let's head east for a meet with number 90 at Groff's Grove as the Strasbourg 89 goes steaming in 93. As number 89 eases past the Cherry Crest Farm, she starts a downhill run toward the Groff's Grove siding and the meet with number 90. With number 89 safely past the siding, let's ride along with number 90 as she starts up the grade on her westbound run back to town.
while number 90 gets ready for her next trip, let's head back to Black Horse Road and catch up with number 89 on her return trip to Strasbourg. As number 89 pulls her train into the Strasbourg station, let's head west about 60 miles to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania for a short visit on the Gettysburg Railroad. The Gettysburg runs freight and operates passenger excursions over the Getty branch of the former Reading Railroad from the junction with the Western Maryland in Gettysburg northward to the town of Biglerville, eight miles up the line, and on to Mount Holly Springs, 25 miles up the line. Along the way, the train passes through Adams County as it steams past historic battlefields dating to the early days of the Civil War. The Gettysburg roster includes two diesels used for freight operations, a U-30B, number 28, and an Alco RS-36, number 70. Along with the two diesels, there are two steam locomotives on the Gettysburg roster. First is number 76, an ex-Mississippi Railway 280 built by Baldwin in 1920. Next is number 1278, an ex-Canadian Pacific Railway 462 Heavy Pacific, built for the Canadian Pacific in 1948 by the Canadian Locomotive Company Limited. In 1969, number 1278 was donated to Steamtown and subsequently leased to the Cadillac and Lake City Railroad and renumbered 127. She was returned to Steamtown in 1974 and numbered back to 1278 before being acquired by the Gettysburg Railroad in 1988. Since then, she has shared the honors with number 76, powering excursions to Biglerville and Mount Holly Springs. But today, we're in for a rare treat. In addition to the usual three-car passenger consist, there are five revenue freight loads consigned to Biglerville and number 1278 will have the honors as head-end power for this rare run. 
So, excuse us for a little artistic license as we go steaming in 93 with the Gettysburg 1278 and her short freight consist.
As the 1278 steams into Biglerville, let's head south to Charlottesville, Virginia for a ride on the Virginia Central as the Virginia Central 1286 and 1238 doublehead their nine-car passenger consist over the former c and main line from Charlottesville to Clifton Forge.
since leaving Charlottesville this morning, our train has been following the former CNO Mountain Division, stopping long enough in Staunton to pick up additional passengers before continuing on through Buffalo Gap and Goshen. After arriving in Clifton Forge, the train was backed to the crossover at the east end of the Clifton Forge yard. From here, the train was spotted on lead track to the engine house, where the 1286 and the 1238 were cut out from the consist. While a CSX hostler spotted the passenger consist back at the Clifton Forge station for the 96-mile return trip to Charlottesville, the steamers took turns on the turntable at the engine house. Both the 1286 and the 1238 were built for the Canadian Pacific Railway in 1948 and 1946, respectively. Number 1286 was built as a Class G5D 462 Pacific by the Canadian Locomotive Company. Sister engine 1238 is a Class G5C built by the Montreal Locomotive Works and weighs about 4,000 pounds less than number 1286. Both locomotives have 20 by 28 inch cylinders which power 70 inch drivers and develop a tractive effort of 34,500 pounds. Since being retired by the Canadian Pacific, these sister locomotives have traveled as a pair, first to Rail Tours Incorporated in 1964 and subsequently to their present owner, Jack Showalter, for excursion service on the Allegheny Central in Covington, Virginia. In 1987, the Allegheny Central relocated to Cumberland, Maryland, where both the 1238 and 1286 were completely rebuilt. In 1993, the owners of the Allegheny Central of Maryland relocated back to Virginia and changed the corporation name to the Virginia Central, with operations based in Charlottesville. Excursions with the 1286 and 1238 began on the Virginia Central in October of 1993 with destinations of Gordonsville and Clifton Forge. So now let's watch as the 1238 eases off of the turntable and couples up to the 1286 for their return trip to Charlottesville.
As the Virginia Central 1286 and 1238 charge up the grade out of Staunton, we'd like to say thanks for joining us for Steaming in 93.